Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Immortal Engines. Today we're going to be working on this Champion 3400 watt inverter generator. Uh, it was given to me by a gentleman that contacted me through one of my ads that I have running online. Uh, and uh, well, he basically told me that he was going to leave it outside for me to pick up. Social distancing. Uh, and anyway, so I drove to his place, I picked up the generator and I quarantined it for a few days look I'm not sure if this works at all but I brought the generator with the gloves put it in the car unloaded it left it down there for about five days until I touched it so I assume that there if there's anything on it it might be dead by now but just to be safe now what the gentleman claims is that this generator cranks but does not start this is one of the nicer ones uh, this generator actually has a battery and it has an auto choke system so basically all you got to do is make sure your gas is on uh, let's see I think that's auto throttle uh, and then you got to turn on your battery this has got more procedures in an airplane this thing okay and then you can finally start okay so cranks no start right let's go ahead and grab the the pull cord here and let me teach you a trick when you get a new generator or, or before you even buy one make sure you grab the cord and you pull it you should feel the compression stroke you see how it comes out easy here let me try it again there compression stroke and then it's easy so yeah for what I feel it seems like the generator has compression but for some reason it doesn't fire I assume it's got bad gas in the carburetor but we're gonna check one thing before we go ahead and tear it down we gotta make sure that the generator has oil because they do have a low oil cutoff and if there is low oil or no oil in there at all then the generator might cut the spark and not fire at all so we're gonna go ahead and check the oil see what happens so you're gonna grab your Phillips head screwdriver and you're gonna go in the back of the generator and you're gonna remove both of those screws I already loosened them up and what you will find back here is the air filter, your carburetor, your valve cover, your spark plug, and your oil. Now, what in the world is all this red stuff? I have no idea, but we'll see. It seems... Yeah, it seems like it has oil. It's not the newest oil, but it does seem full. Yeah, the oil's right there. So, that being said, if the generator has oil, the last thing to check is for spark. Okay guys, so after using my spark plug socket, I removed the spark plug, as you can see, and I pulled this little tube here and I put the spark plug behind it so it makes contact with metal and I put that back. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go on the other side and I'm gonna try to start the engine and we should see spark right here. So let's see how it goes. If we don't have spark, then we found a problem. So we'll see. You guys see that? So we have oil, we have spark, we have fuel. And apparently we have gasoline. It also smells fairly fresh. So it looks like the previous owner left this generator sitting for too long and he forgot to drain the gasoline. If you guys ever wonder what this tube is for, this thing right here is for you to turn like so and drain your gasoline. Seems like the gasoline is definitely getting to the carburetor, but the jets may be too clogged to allow the fuel to flow and get mixed. So what looks like we're gonna have to do is, we're gonna do one test here real quick. I'm gonna squirt a little bit of gas up there, put everything back together, and if it fires for a couple of seconds, then we can go ahead and tear down the carburetor and give it a good clean. So let's go ahead and try that, see what happens. Okay guys, so I squirted a little bit of gas in the spark plug hole. I said a little bit. If you're gonna do this, don't put too much. Just a little squirt. It doesn't take very much. And now I'm gonna go ahead and crank the generator. And sometimes they actually uh, fire up because the fact that it starts 
uh, allows the carburetor to suck in gas. And sometimes they stay running, but that's really rare when they don't start on their own. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. It should fire for a few seconds, and that's what we're looking for. Hmm, that was weird. Hmm. Okay guys, so we're done with our diagnostics and it's time to start taking stuff apart and see what we find. So an air filter always tells you a lot about a generator. Yeah, this one smells like gas. It's not too bad, I think we can reuse this. So I'm gonna go ahead and try one more time to get it started. So I'm running out of it, but you grab your can of brake clean, you open the choke, and you give it a good squirt in there. And then you fire it up. One or two. I'm gonna grab my deep socket 10 millimeter and my ratchet, and we're gonna go ahead and start loosening. Let me see if I can show you what I'm trying to get off here. Right there. So there is one nut like that, and then there's another one next to it. So after you remove that, your box should be able to come out. Now don't expect it to come out easy. It's a tight fit. Okay, so you pull the snorkel first and then you tilt it under the carburetor and it should come out. So here's the box, nothing to that. And now we have a better view of our carburetor. Okay, so back there is our fuel line. Then up here we got the connector for our um, throttle and choke. Okay, it's got an auto throttle and auto choke. Now, if you have one of these champion generators that does not come with a remote start, don't freak out if you only see one motor on top of the carburetor. That's because in order for it to start remotely, it needs to choke itself. So if you have one with no remote start, you should only see one motor here for the throttle only. The choke is manual, you'll do that from the other side. So this one doesn't have that. We're gonna slide it out of here and uh, disconnect those uh, little electric motors from the top. So before you go ahead and, uh, here, let me show you. Before you go ahead and disconnect uh, the motors, in, in order to remove the carburetor, you have to undo the screws on the motors. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mark them because if they mix up, then this will definitely never run. So the, the carburetor was like that. So the motor closest to the engine is the throttle. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark a T on it. Throttle and C for choke. So when I put it back together, I don't mix them up because then it would definitely not run good. So I got both of the little motors out before you remove the throttle side, and the throttle side is the one that's closest to the engine, make sure that you close the, the throttle. So that butterfly right there, make sure that you push it so that it's shut. That will help you realign the pins when you put it back together. So now that that's done, we have to remove the fuel line, but before you do that, make sure to shut off your fuel. It will leak a little bit, but it won't leak forever if you leave it open. Been there, done that. Exactly. And there it is. We have our carburetor out. So next I'm gonna put this on the bench and we're gonna go through it to make sure that it's thoroughly clean and ready to be reinstalled. Let's go. Okay guys, so we got the carburetor right here on the bench, ready to go. So I have my 10 millimeter socket, brake clean, and a flathead screwdriver. And I believe that should be enough to uh, work on this uh, carburetor. So go ahead and break the bottom loose Ooh. like I said everything feels 
like it's been put together at the factory this probably hasn't been messed with by anyone so that's a good sign because a lot of people unfortunately they don't know what they're doing and they kind of do ruin these things so got that so now we're gonna pull the main jet from the center Really easy. And we should be able to pull this bit. This little thing right here, I'm gonna call it a chimney. It's got a lot of little holes and this is what helps spread the fuel and atomizes it so that the generator can burn it. So we're gonna leave that right there. And next, I already see, I don't know if you can see it, but this one right here is the idle jet. And that one's going to be a problem because usually you have access from the top. So I'm going to see if I can pull it out sideways. Yeah, there you go. So be patient. Don't strip it and pull it out from the side. So it seems like we got lucky because just before it hit that other s screw right there, it seems like it's all the way out and it falls right out so that's good news I didn't want to mess with that because that messes with the adjustment on the throttle so we're gonna go ahead and insert that holes are here on the bottom and we're gonna spray slowly and see if it comes out out of the other holes Woo. That went to my face if it does have a metal insert you're safe to spray it in there if it has a rubber don't do it because this brake clean ruins the rubber and usually I remove this right here, this rubber gasket, but I just learned to be careful and not to spray it with brake clean. So I don't, because sometimes they break, but you should probably consider removing it. If it, if it puts up a fight, don't, don't, tr don't keep trying, because then you're gonna break it and you're gonna need to buy parts. So I'm gonna spray where I removed that idle jet. <laughs> And now we're going to spray these two little jets right here. And the other side. Right there. You don't have to empty the can on this thing. Just a couple, couple sprays. You see it there? Look, I'll do it one more time for you. Right there by the throttle. All right, so I would say it's safe to say that the carburetor has been cleaned. Okay, I'm gonna open the throttle and I'm just gonna give it a spray. And then what you wanna do is you wanna test how free these things move around. Because I had it with another generator where these things were a little bit too stiff and the motors were incapable of opening it. So anyway, I would say it's safe to say that the body of the carburetor is clean. The bottom is in mint condition. I mean, this thing hasn't seen water. Uh, now we're gonna try our main jet. Oh, actually, that's not the main jet. This is the main jet. This is easy. You put it in there. It should spray. If it doesn't, you grab a needle and you poke around on either side to loosen up the, the trash in there. And then you go ahead and spray it until it comes out. This one works good so we're gonna leave it alone now this one we're gonna plug one end actually this end is easier we're gonna insert our hose and be careful with this one because all of those holes are gonna shoot brake clean everywhere so make sure they all work so now this carburetor is ready for reassembly so we're gonna grab this guy right here the big side to the bottom main jet Now those are in, we're gonna put our needle and float again. Like so. And we're gonna insert our pin. Like that. And one thing that you have to do 
in order to not have any issues is you have to test if you put this together correctly so what you're gonna do is you're gonna blow with your mouth on this thing right here while the carburetor is upside down like that and you should not be able to blow because it should be closed and then you should flip it and blow again and when it's upright if you blow and the air goes in everything's good so I'm gonna go ahead and try that both are good and next I'm gonna insert this guy right here I should have taken note of which way that was pointing but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it slightly loose and when I put it back in the generator I'll snug it up all the way so now don't forget to tighten it if you do that because you're gonna flood everywhere and last I'm gonna insert my idle jet like that and with lots of patience insert it tighten it all the way back down okay so it's all the way in now we're ready there you go tight now we're ready to put this back in the generator and see what happens okay guys so we're back at the generator um we got our carburetor clean and good to go so now is the most important part as you can see on the top of the carburetor is where those electric motors fit and one thing that's very important is that you align the inside of that with the shaft of the motor the reason why is because the motors themselves don't have a round shaft if you can see here they have a shape and that's very important because they need to align because they have been calibrated so for example the throttle right here is in the exact position it needs to be on the closed position it's the same thing that our carburetor is in see throttle is closed it's closed up there and it will fit right in so let's go ahead and install both of them secure the screws connect the fuel and uh, probably put everything back together and see if it runs Okay guys, so I think that I figured out what's wrong with this generator and it's something that I've encountered before. So let me see if I can show you here. So in order for me to diagnose this generator, we have to get to that plug back there. You see the plug with the red, there's three red wires and two yellow ones going in. Well, I try to unplug it from here, but uh, it, there's just not enough room, unfortunately. And I wouldn't want most of you guys sticking your hand in there. So basically, what I believe is happening is something that I encountered with this uh, type of generator before. Not the one with the electric start, but the, uh, the other version that doesn't have that feature. And here's what happens. Uh, when you run your generator really, really, really hard and really close to the limit, uh, the inverter board overheats. It has electronics, so basically it fries itself. Uh, a couple of symptoms occur. One of them is that the generator, when you start it, it revs all the way up and the auto throttle seems to do nothing to change that, which it should. And it, in fact, it should never go uh, to redline by itself. Uh, the inverter board should prevent it from redlining. So that's one sign. Another sign is that uh, you pull your cord and it doesn't turn at all. And you may think that your engine is seized or that it's flooded because I mean, you're gonna break the cord trying to spin the engine. So what happens is, in some occasions, when the inverter board fries, it goes bad, it creates a short inside. And because it's directly connected to the electrical system of the generator, it kind of electromagnetically locks the engine, which really, really stinks because it, it's, it's, you know, you think the whole thing is, is screwed up when it's only the inverter board. Now, I believe that this is only a mild case of that symptom. I believe that it is shorted, but it's not shorted strong enough to prevent the engine from spinning. It is spinning. However, it doesn't let it spin too fast because the more electricity it generates, the more it impedes the engine from turning. I don't know if that makes any sense, but here's how we're going to diagnose that. We're going to put this, pull this back cover off and it should be pretty simple. It's only three screws here. Those are uh, Phillips heads another two Phillips right here and two 
what I believe are 10 millimeter ones and then this cover will come off. It will give us access to the inside and then we probably gotta pull a couple more screws so that we can get the inverter board to come out. We're gonna unplug that thing and I'll bet you the generator will start. So I'm gonna put our time lapse on, I'm gonna pull that cover and we'll see what happens. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like. I removed all of those screws, that box comes out. This is gonna be kind of stuck to it. So we just kind of gotta undo this rubber things right here. But anyway, here's where we wanna get to. You see that guy down there? So you're gonna grab a little flathead screwdriver and you're gonna stick it on the tab and you're gonna push it so that it, you know, releases it. And you're gonna stick your hand through this side. And you're gonna disconnect it. So this cable right here is the one that comes from the generator. The power comes in from here. It's three phase power and a couple of, of uh, low voltage DC, I believe. And uh, so that kills the, the power to the entire board. I have a feeling that's the problem with this generator. So if it starts now and it revs all the way up, uh, we need a new inverter board. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, everything on. I'm gonna try the, the electric start, see what happens. <laughs> So, like I said, the inverter board is bad, it's shorted out, and it's causing the motor to not be able to gain RPMs because the faster it goes, the more voltage it produces. The more voltage it produces, the worse the short gets. So, looks like we're gonna have to call Champion and get a replacement board. Okay guys, so I just remembered that I sent one of those inverter boards to a family member on a generator that I gave to them. Uh, and actually their generator didn't need it so they have it laying around and I gotta wait for them to mail it back to me so what we're gonna do because it's going to take a few days we got some parts laying around uh, we got this carburetor open here our inverter board so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this generator back together uh, the part that I'm concerned about is the carburetor I don't want to leave it open like that but one good thing is that because we removed the front cover I can actually insert the box and screw it on much more easily from here. So I'm gonna put this on a time lapse, and when I'm done with that time lapse, and we come back, I should have that inverter board with me. So I'll show you how to install it, and that will basically finish the generator for this video. So let's put the camera right here where you will get a good view, somewhere around here, and uh, I'll see you when I'm done. Okay guys, and just like that, I put the whole generator back together. Uh, I did put the inverter board back in there, but I didn't plug anything. And honestly, it only takes me like three minutes to pull this cover off. And then I'll slide that inverter board and I'll replace it with this new one. So it is not new, but I know that this one definitely works. It doesn't uh, have a short. So I already um, loosened up this plastic piece here. Okay, so now with the cover off, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to replace it. So first of all, uh, you have to uh, undo all of these connectors. So here's our bad one, okay? Bad one to the left, and then good one to the right. There it is. So if you guys have this generator and this part goes bad on you, uh, I'm gonna leave the part number and the contact information for champion generators uh, i believe that this part is around 180 dollars plus shipping so i think you will be looking at right around 200 dollars to buy a new one of these i have literally bought 
close to 10 of these from them. And maybe in a future episode, I will show you how I retrofit this part into other brand generators of the same wattage. It's not a plug and play, but it is possible. So I just have to find the right candidate. I usually like to do it with the Kipper, Kipper brand generators. But anyway, without uh, talking anymore, uh, they do look a little bit different, but don't worry. All the connectors are the same. See, I'm going to insert this one right here. It only takes one screw down there and we should be good to go. Let's go. I forgot to mention something, guys. On your old board, you're going to have to pull these rubber uh, vibration isolators or whatever the hell they're called. So that's the old board, and I already installed my new board. So uh, I'm showing you this before I show you how to install it. I know it makes no sense, but I just didn't want you to forget to put these on. They're very important because then your board's going to make a lot of noise like that. So I have to disconnect this one, pull it out, put them on, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and try and start it. So there we go guys, it was a little bit more difficult than expected, but uh, I finally managed to plug in everything. Everything is nice and snug in there. All connections are good. Oh, also one more thing. Uh, these two wires right here, okay, these are the ones that go to the outlets, all right? And uh, the connectors are actually exactly the same, so do not worry, uh, they do not uh, need to go on one side only. You can connect them uh either way you know red here white there or red hair there and white here that does not matter so in case you're like oh no what do i do they both fit which one's which doesn't matter all right so i'm gonna go ahead and put that bolt back on and then we're gonna try and start it okay everyone so we got the board in we got it plugged in we got those rubber things inserted in there uh, and i think it's ready to be fired up so i'm gonna turn on our battery uh choke is on uh i think i think we should just crank it fuel is on all right let's go really nice look at that sounds very good it doesn't smoke at all either right on looks like we fixed it so I'm gonna go ahead and put that lid back on and uh, I'm gonna let it run while I do that and once I'm done putting the lid back on, I'm gonna change the oil and the last step will be to detail this thing so it's ready to go on sale. So I don't know if you can tell, but I have that space heater on max. That's about uh, 1500 to 1700 watts. And as you can hear, the generator is actually working pretty hard here. Let me turn it off. So that's one thing I like to do when I'm Pretty much done with a generator is a run it for a few minutes then run it under a decent load like this space heater and that does two things for me uh, i like to check that my inverter board is good under uh load you know if they're not making any uh serious power then they might be showing a green light and the generator might run okay but if you stress test it and it remains operational and it makes power then it looks like everything is good uh, the other thing is uh, I like to put a load on the engine so it gets really nice and hot uh, that way when I drain the oil I can get all of that really old bad oil out because 90% of the time when I get a generator the oil is beyond black you'll see that right now As you can see that oil's in better days So I drained the oil, it looks awful as I expected. Looks like it's never been changed. I'm gonna insert that hose right up there again. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert some brand new oil. And then we should be ready for the last step, which is detailing this thing. 
Now we're gonna insert our dipstick and you insert it without screwing it in to measure the oil level. And this one is right on the money. If you can see, this one is right on the full line. Well, that side looks like it's overfilled, but here, I'll do it again. You see that? So, oil is good to go. I'm gonna put this back in here. And for the last step, I'm gonna use trim shine you can buy these at the auto parts stores just buy the cheapest one you find and basically what you want to do is you want to spray your is it not working okay so you want to spray it on your generator and then you want to wipe it with a cloth and the plastics will look brand new so i'm going to put a time lapse that's the finishing touch let's go ahead and get this guy finished Okay everyone, so I'm done detailing the generator. I think it looks a whole lot better. It actually looks pretty much brand new. Uh, thankfully the previous owner uh, didn't damage it or have any missing parts, so that's a plus. So now let me show you one last time. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start it. It should start right up. Good to go. So that's it for this episode everybody and it would be awesome if you guys hit the subscribe button and the like and that you leave me a comment with any questions you might have that will help my channel a whole lot that way I can reach more people with these videos on how to fix generators at home. Uh, thank you for watching Immortal Engines and I'll see you on the next one.